Right. Hey, hey well, everybody, well, thanks for those that are uh, dialing in. Thanks for uh, joining us. This is episode 17 woo, of the Microsoft Community Office Hours. Um, and uh, we're going can to almost do, vote. Yeah, almost. It's uh, AMA stuff. So ask us anything. That's right. If there's anything you need to know about the American Music Awards, this is That's where you want unfiltered. That's right. Totally That's what we're all about. Yeah. We can take her. Yeah, we can take crack at it. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. What was that little sound? I sent a, a, one of these electronic messages. Oh wow! Yeah, that was oh, fancy. And who did you message, Riz? It was an email, and uh, it was an undisclosed participant. <laughs> <laughs> it was an, I actually. It was a. It was a note uh, to, to thank him for laughing at my joke. Oh uh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Lots of hearts and, you know, sort of kisses and things. Hey, well, Mike and I were just talking. Mike, are you coming on screen? Are you shy this morning or what? I'm on. My camera's on. Is it? Uh, Is I don't it? see it. Well, it shows it, it. I got the little box showing up. What the hell? I see a your little. Initials of, your initials look great today. But that's all we see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why does it not show my? Maybe start up. Hey, Sean, we'll, we'll, we'll start things out light. Hey, the T-shirt today. So I finally oh. wore it. We talked about it enough. If you nice. Must, the giving Very nice. beard. Let me switch. Yep. yep. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's blue polo shirt day here, as you can see. As I as I disappear, I disappear. That's yeah. nice. Is my camera yes. showing now? Uh, no. But I, you know, the M and the N are really. I think that the, the Minnesota font, represented the font really comes out today. It looks great. Yeah. <laughs> I've got more t-shirts on the way. So do I. I'm drowning in t-shirts. I actually got a, a reply on Twitter from Corti, the, the folks that I order from in Great Britain. They uh, ping me back. They asked you to stop mentioning their name. You know, <laughs> Hardly. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, well, hey, well, uh, f just from these videos alone, literally dozens of people will see those T-shirts. So I know, uh, you know, literally dozens, it's, it's not including us. We're talking yeah. discount. Wait, no, wait, I was including us. So including us, OK. Oh, uh, well, then we're still talking discount. Hand handfuls of people. Yeah. No. Uh, so the first. Uh, so Mike and I were just chatting about before you guys jumped on about the. There's an MVP there call is. going on to discuss uh, the the latest uh, uh, news coming out of the Teams world. So yes, Mike, there you're waving a lot. We see you now. Excellent. <laughs> it is good to see. you. I didn't want to interrupt you. Wait. Now there's no sound. We no. shouldn't have told him. Oh, we shouldn't have told him. <laughs> I would have just left him there. Wait. 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 You got to see the T-shirt. Uh, all right. Let's see it. Awesome, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is that is Ignite 2018 from MS Learn. And you'll notice it's got the old keyboard. It's the retro. Got the old, uh, the old uh, computer icon. Oh, yeah. Explorer. And then wait. If anybody can tell me what that is. What's that icon from? Can you see that? Yeah, that's the networking icon. That's the old network neighborhood. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> old school. And it's you've got funny. the, uh, and it's the it's max headroom funny. grids in the background. Sorry, Eric, what were you saying? Yeah. I, I, my apologies there. I was going to say it's pretty funny to watch as he stands up, all three of our heads go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we are, everyone's in the same <laughs> position. <laughs> uh, True yeah. enough. As you That's were we saying, need to, we need to synchronize where we all do this at the same time. Just kind of go like this, you know, forehead synchronization. Yeah. No, but uh, so the latest news coming out of Microsoft Teams around the what is it? The together mode and uh, yeah. some other features of some cool stuff that's coming out that uh, I think we've talked about this in the in the past. Uh, of course, you saw Microsoft react to the uh, the, the needs of the community for the uh, you know, the the three by three uh, videos and then the, you're going up to seven by seven and they're talking about now. I saw something else in the news that they're going to be up to, I don't know, hundreds that you'll be able to have in interactive wow. um, chat. Wow. So 
Wow. That's a busy screen. Well, but it's a not, busy network. Not on the screen. Holy crap. Not on the screen. Oh. But in in they're going to expand the number of people that can be in the meeting. Oh, okay. 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 So I think it'll be whatever you have on on screen. And then it'll be like it is now where other people that are not participating actively will be, you know, uh, you'll in the people mode, you'll be able to see them all. So it still sounds like saw, some serious multiplexing uh, jujitsu. I think I saw 300 active and a thousand participants. OK. Wow. But well, I like the, the roadmap has 6.9 million little boxes on the screen. You know, that's hmm. a couple years away, but they're going towards a 6.9 million view. It's going to be... We'll need a gigabit Ethernet cards in our machines to manage the streams. IPv6. Yeah. Excellent. Why not? <laughs> I'm still waiting for the psychic interface. A psychic yeah. interface. It works. Watch, Christian. <laughs> Eric, I told you, we're not bringing that up. Table that. So, Maybe I, next week. I got a quiz. Yeah, a quiz. Team, okay. Teams quiz. Uh-oh. It happened last week. They had a change. They announced the change. I want to see if anybody gets it right. Okay. So what is the name of the uh, top role in teams? What, 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 what governs all other roles in teams? What's, that, what's the name of it? Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> All right, is it is it uh, is is it deity of some kind? No, it's it's a role. It's kind of like an Azure role, or is it a deity? Listen to you. <laughs> um, it's actually they used to, everything was called Team Service Administrator. So Team Service Administrator was like the you know the the god role, um, and they are now officially renaming that to Teams Administrator. Yeah. So that made big news. Well, they and realized I, I, that the acronym TSA wasn't really a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not only the that. The only video conference that comes with a body cavity search. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of what made it more personal to me. I, I felt like gonna, I was, you know. Now they're just going to be TA. So you guys actually say, are they a TA and A or just a TA? What are you teaching? Wait, I need my sound effect. Where's my rim shot? Hang on. <laughs> Wait, wait. It just takes too long every time. <laughs> is this not queued up? Got to have this at the ready. Is this on? Intro on? Rim <laughs> that was it. Sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> weak sauce. It's really weak. Yeah, that's about the best I can do. Um, yeah, the... Um, all right. So if there is anybody watching on the streams, um, all... Th three of you no uh let me see how many there are oh, no we've got about a dozen people in two locations yeah. great feel free to ask a question um post it um and uh we'll try and address those but other than that uh gentlemen any questions anything that came up for this past week that you would like to discuss i had uh actually an issue come up somebody asked me about that i could not find an answer to um until i found in some kind of uh you know, obscure technical document out there. Um, you can actually take the 32-bit version of Office now and convert it to 64 without even doing the whole uninstall and install. And I did not know that. Oh, really? So they were running 32-bit. Their Excel. They were running this thing with macros. And it was taking forever. You know, it was a it was a, a, a DBA, and they were like, "Hey, I bring this thing in. Why is it so freaking slow?" And I'm like. Couldn't figure it out. I'm like, well, what are you doing? They're telling me all this. And I go, go, go into task manager, take a look at the process for Excel. And it's like peaked out. It's using GPU. It's going nuts. And sure enough, I'm like, well, what does the line say? And I do a screen share and I'm looking at it. It says Excel 32 bit. I'm like, oh, dude, <laughs> you got to switch to 64. And I'm like, he's like, well, that means I got to uninstall Office and I got to reinstall Office. And I'm like, they have to have found a way. So yes, you can do it. You download the Office custom install um, the kit or whatever they call it, that one executable. And uh, it's a switch now. That is what allows you to switch from 32-bit to 64. It uninstalls 32, drops 64. You keep your same settings. You, you're golden. That's nice. It's not yeah. something you think about every day anymore. 
no. I know back when we were doing the switch to 64 and you know making more use of resources, memory, whatnot, it was on everyone's mind. But I don't think many people think about that anymore uh, until they go into their task manager and look yeah. at some processes. Then you know yeah. they peek out on memory usage and. Well, I mean, does everybody remember that Microsoft used to recommend 32 bit? They would be like when when you know yeah. Office Office first came out in 32 and 64, they're like, oh no, 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 don't use 64. We put it out there, but don't use it, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I still have that irrational fear of 64 bit. Yeah. So for that was office only. Uh, yeah. yeah, there there were a couple. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, there, there was some feature, something that uh, Tom Duff and I uh, shared in our uh, uh, productivity tips, where there were there were two features over the last three years that were 32-bit only. I'm like, Microsoft, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, but it was just some some you know cool little Office feature. And I, I think it was. It's almost like it was. Uh, Kind of in the labs days, it was you know, some preview stuff that was out there and that not quite ready for prime time. But um, sure. I'll see if I can find those. I think um, I back to Office I, 2013 or something. I don't remember. I, there are there are two questions which are similar. Uh, like to talk about one that's uh, so I'm I'm pulling questions down from the Office 365 as well as the Microsoft Teams communities and Facebook. Um, and that's where, for those that are watching this recording, not on YouTube, uh, after the, the fact, uh, you can ask questions, post questions over there. We stream live there. Um, but the first one over in the 365 community from uh, Mirko says, uh, hi, in Teams, the file tab is mapped to the folder general in SharePoint. Is it possible to change this to the root level of the library? And so, so the, the second question, which uh, relates to this, uh, says, when I, this is from Ollie over in the Teams community. When I search for a file in Teams, the result shows what team the file is in, but not which channel. Any idea how I could quickly find the channel name? So we've seen versions of these questions of, you know, what is the mapping of <coughs> files within Teams? And you know what's the logic, and, and we, I, I, you know, I, I think from these questions we need to do a better job of educating end users of this is how the information architecture that of Teams, and so here's the logical flow of you know where you'll find files, and its SharePoint counterparts. So, yeah. um, the first question of you know can you um, change the direction uh, or change the mapping of a folder? Uh, down to the root level. And of course, uh, Paul Stork swooped in, answered uh, a bunch of questions uh, ar around this. But his his first response is, channels and teams are hard-coded to map to folders, and that cannot be changed for any channel, even the general. Um, you got anybody disagree with that? Any? No. If you want to iframe something, you could you know, stick a SharePoint URL in there that points to a lower um, nested folder and get at it or perhaps up higher, but that's not the, you're kind of working around the problem rather than actually dealing specifically with it. Right. Well, I think that's a, that's a, Eric, if you, you were, were, sorry about that. If you were to, to remap it, then you you potentially mess up your whole IA because everything is built off of that document library and that structure. So think of your your connectivity into OneNote, where you open up the team and the channel, and then all your channels are neatly aligned. If you start remapping and, and playing with things, and you won't have alignment there, and you won't have any defaults. Well, if if uh, my, I'm I'm assuming that the goal this person's goal is that look, I have all this documentation across these multiple channels, but I all I want them all to go to the one place down to that route. And uh, and certainly there are permissions issues there. There's people that should only have access to those things that are happening in that channel and not not another. 
Um, but for the reasons you stated, it you know, wrecks the information architecture. If your goal, though, is to have a like a shared services, I always use the example of a project management organization where there is a central place where, where all of our project files or all of our templates for our documentation are stored. Uh, and then you can create a different library and you can have that map to a tab as well as in files so that and then you just through training instruct people hey when you're going to save your files it needs to go to this location or pull your templates from this directory and you can make that part of your provisioning process so that any new team that's created automatically has that tab and that that files link uh you know folder in place yeah but no, you can't, for all the reasons that we've just stated, not remap that drive. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah we're, second, we're really good at telling you why you can't do it, but unfortunately, we don't have a solution as to how you can do it. Well, yeah. Aside from the iframe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so the other question is that, the you know, is there a way to quickly see which... Uh, so, uh, so when I search for a file in Teams, the results show what team the file's in, but not which channel. Any idea how I could quickly find the channel name? So he's saying, use case, I want to store the file dogs.doc next to the file cats.doc. I don't know which channel cats.doc is in. Don't the find feature will do that now, right? This control F. Is there a control F function now? I have no idea. I thought there was. I mean, it says in the notes they were implementing. Maybe they haven't rolled it out, but it's a control F feature that's supposed to search all of your teams for keywords. And I would. I don't know if that covers also files. But I have a link to the actual article where they talk about the release of it. You want to. Do you want to share that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to, right here. Here it is. Uh, contextual search is coming to Teams Control F. Uh, it was published back in May, and it says uh, they updated it. The rollout starts late June, completed by mid-July. Yeah, I've got it in my tenant. Yeah. And it will allow for contextual search um, within a specific chat or channel. Um, once initiated, the search query and results will be limited to the focused chat or channel. So you'd have to search each channel. Yeah, so that that kind of rolls up. I mean, is there, but you can do a search across a team. Yeah. Yep. Johnny on the spot. Yeah, this is my first thought is that, you know, you want to know where it is. Well, you can search at the team level. Um, and then uh, I don't know what the state is of the broader search, the office.com search, which should search across everything that you have access to in theory. I don't know, you know, I, I've not been keeping up on what's there, but that should be the roll up so that you're able to look and do a one search from everything within SharePoint, within Teams, within Yammer, within your desktop. Uh, that's been shared via LinkedIn, you know, anything you have access to as well as, um, well, through Office doesn't have public internet search as part of that. I know with Bing search, you can enable that. So it'll also look, it'll do an external search as well as internal. But again, I don't know what, how, what needs to be set up, if anything needs to be set up. Does to that be do that in SharePoint? Sean, does it, I mean, does SharePoint allow, I mean, SharePoint allows would would go out and do OneDrive. It would do anything that's related to SharePoint, right? Anything it's got a crawler for, yeah. But I mean, the search in there would would should allow you to search anything that's tied to SharePoint, which would include Teams. The anything you OneDrive. set up a content source for, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Posting the links and a uh, couple of feeds here. We do have a question. Eric asks, um, "What? And not 
Eric Riz, just to be clear. Are you sure? He's right here. He might ask the same question, but here, uh, Eric from over from the Facebook community says, what tricks do you use to help logging into multiple tenants? Oh, boy. <laughs> boy, is that a royal <laughs> P-I-T-A. Yeah, Come on, Riz. Come on. Yeah, you know it wasn't me. <laughs> DOS I, box. I'm enough gray hair. I don't need any more of that. Thank you. Using yeah, DOS no, this box. Is, this is something that is, uh, yeah, I, uh, this is something that, I, I know that Microsoft is looking at providing some additional solutions for um, some people go in and create uh, multiple um, profiles and windows. Other people would just, you know, you open up uh, uh, multiple browser tabs. Um, yeah, I use Rambox. Rambox, that's it. Yeah, yep. I've got it open on my desktop right now. Yeah, so Rambox is a free tool that's out there for people who don't know it. So it uses a a, a lot less uh, memory than having like a, a Chrome tabs open. I don't know how it performs against uh, the new uh, Edge browser because um, I've been using it really before the the full release or the latest release of uh, the Chromium based uh, Edge, but. Um, yeah, so Eric, I, I would say uh, you know check out Rambox. It's a uh, it's a great tool for that. I have three or four different Teams profiles that I uh, y utilize throughout every single day, and so I just switch between tabs. If there are notifications, and I have every messaging service up there, so I have my Gmail, my Facebook mail, my LinkedIn mail. I have Hootsuite. And I have these Teams. I, anything else that's in it, oh, I don't so have it open. Using, you're using the web version of Teams, then you're not getting the full, you know, fat correct experience correct. doing that, right? Correct. But you, <laughs> but the ability to use the other account credentials without having to sign oh, I out. That. Right. I get that. I get that. Yeah. But when we were, I mean, when this thing kind of bubbled up back in March, right? So we were doing our big summit. And that to me was like one of my big first, a lot of people's first exposure to teams and the, the limitations of teams. Uh, one of the things was, you know, well, in order to you to chat, you couldn't use the web client, you had to use the back client. Well, you couldn't do multiple accounts. And if you did, you were considered a guest. You weren't considered an actual, you know, <clears throat> they wouldn't let you in, you know, because, oh, it said guest and it had a Gmail address or some other address that wasn't a, a company address. Um, so I, I thought they were coming up with a way that you'd actually have, you know, teams, the back client being able to, to manage that for you. You know, what you're trying to do is you're, you're just, kind of, you're just kind of doing a workaround, right? You're just doing, you're doing the browser tabs and you're just right. Kind of working around. Right. It's a, yeah, it correct. It, you're, you're right. I mean, we're, we're, that's what I kind of said at the beginning. Like we're waiting for Microsoft to have a solution for that. Um, mm -hmm. For years, and, and, yeah. In the meantime, yeah, we've been this. This was a feature that we identified within the first ninety days of Teams going live three years ago, three and a half years ago. Um, I I remember being at the MVP summit. And I remember asking the question, and I remember them saying that technical difficulties were not trivial. Yeah. And the, short they answer, the short answer is use your mobile device. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and while you're all laughing, it, it is a good answer. You know, it, it, it it's you have all the places you need to be, and it gets you the the quote unquote best experience that you can have. Yeah, it's very fast. Um, Eric is not done with us. He has another question. Uh, it says, uh, "Here's another one: Python scripting to connect to Microsoft Graph." And my so nuts. This one actually this. is me. Sorry. Just want to clarify. As soon as you said Python scripting, you knew it was me. Of course, of course. You just jump at the word Python. Yeah. The the Python I see scripting where this is going. across your shirt. It's implied. It's yeah. not literally on your shirt, but it's implied that it's there. Therefore, we knew it was. Uh, no, it says, so Python scripting to connect to Microsoft Graph. Am I nuts to try this? I have to create a migration tool from discussion forum to Teams. I don't think he's nuts. Um, I mean, I think those are two separate questions. <laughs> and the scripting 
Is he nuts? We've been through this, Sean. You've made that mistake before. <laughs> True. True that. Yeah. I, scripting wise, no, I don't think you're nuts to do that. It's, um, you know, Microsoft has made a number of different libraries available that can be called from multiple platforms and scripting languages. Um, Python's no different than any other one. I use PowerShell. I'll use PowerShell to go through Graph. So, you know, Python should be able to do it just fine. Um, I'm not particularly skilled at Python. I only got into it uh, a bit for uh, working with my son in Minecraft and mods and things like that. But um, it is a viable language. A lot of people use it. Should work. Here is an interesting question, uh, and I'm looking through some of the responses. Oh, and by the way, Hal, hey, good morning. Hey, Hal. Hi there. Oh, we're having fun here, folks. <laughs> the delay was the fact that Teams is fighting me again this morning. Oh. Hey. Frozen on my screen. Yeah, your face hasn't moved in five minutes, but look good. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's, that's the policy again. <laughs> it's because that's... I have video turned on. Uh. <laughs> And then uh, Mike, and Mike disappeared. Here comes Amazon with my UPSs. Nice. All right. Um, oh, which reminds me, I need to go get that uh, that uh, SSD that you recommended, Sean. So. Okay. Um, uh, and I'm, uh, yeah. Anyway, I may have another question for you afterwards. Uh, here's a question that's uh, Teams and SharePoint related. So, Eddie posts his question. I have to uh, says I've run into an issue with Teams and SharePoint that Microsoft cannot figure out. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll figure this out. Good frame, uh, good frame. Yeah, I moved folders and documents from a channel to a private channel within the same team. Okay. The files exported out but do not reappear in the team channel they were moved in. After some searching, they are listed in the correct channel in SharePoint within the site content section under documents. Microsoft support has not been able to troubleshoot why the files are not listed in the team channel. Does anyone have any thoughts or suggestions? And they were, uh, somebody asked like, how did you move them? And he replied, says from within teams using the move feature in the dropdown. So that's kind of a snap in your face, Microsoft. Used your own tool to move it. Oh, God. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what was going on there. Because the folders, you know, channels and folders are synonymous. But the way that SharePoint handles folders is less than, oh, man less than transparent um uh, my latest blog post i wrote it a while ago but it got into the object model of files um, folders and whatnot and it's it's very interesting the relationships and how things interact within the object model um i don't know what was going on I would have to actually get more information to know. It depends. Yeah, thank you. Where's my air horn? <laughs> That's a, we have to have the it the it depends sound effect. I you know, all I can do is You know that we don't hear it, right? We can't so, hear that. All right. Like we're smiling, we're smiling at you, but we don't actually hear it. <laughs> We're just being polite. I don't have set up in this thing. I need to set it up so that each one of these, uh, that it's uh, in OBS, that it also includes the sound through the Elgato. So I don't have that set up. Yeah, apologies. Um, yeah. So, so there no was worries. a sound effect. You guys would be uh, thoroughly impressed. That's all you need to know. So. Yeah. You. You can go back in and edit this later. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. As you know, I, I do a lot of that kind of editing. Um, yeah, so 
Uh, Paul Stork uh, responded to this one as well. And he said, uh, uh, boy, lecturing us, Paul. Private channels files are in a completely separate site collection. Uh, did you find the files in the original team SharePoint site collection in the private? And Eddie responded, it's in the private channel SharePoint. So he, he went through and did screen sharing with Microsoft and they weren't able to determine what was going on. Hmm. Um, so uh, Jacob says, so by opening your private channel in Teams, go to files, you don't see the files, then click open in SharePoint. Um, and he says that uh, the files appear on the correct SharePoint under the site contents documents, but they just don't appear in the all documents for the SharePoint. Hmm. And therefore, they don't show up in the teams. So I don't know what's going on behind the scenes there. If they've got some form of, uh, if they've got a cache that they build. The good news is I know exactly who to speak to at Microsoft to get him an answer. I won't reveal that person's name. Oh, They're, so it's not person, good are you? For their yeah. own safety. However, yeah. I can reach out to that individual and maybe get back to us next week with the response. Or or later today, and we can share it this evening's so whether if you're not able to make it, Eric, if you would do that. I love when you say not able to make it. It's 9 p.m. here, dude. <laughs> yeah. And? Oh, that was it. I was just... Oh, yeah. yeah. So, just throwing it out there. Maybe that's just a statement of fact. Yeah. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be great. Eric, if you if you can do it, you know, today, if you can't get get a response today, let us know and we'll talk about it next week. Uh, any other questions? Um, and now Mike is back and Hal is gone, so they might be the same person. <laughs> yeah. No. Your I'm thinking no on that one. <laughs> Just a guess, but my spidey senses. Are they tingling? Indeed, they are. <laughs> Much about tingles. So, what, everyone? What are your thoughts about um, the fact that the the Tron Three is back on? That they're going to be they're now looking at uh, casting that. There's rumors that Jared Leto. I'm not a fan of Leto. Will be part of that but the fact that it was supposed to be a trilogy and then uh, and now it's uh it's back on and they're gonna do it it was canceled now it's done let it's me get exciting. a browser open tron 3 are you actually seeing yeah. it just right now what exactly <laughs> holy smokes did you guys hear that hockey's restarting is that ice <laughs> hockey yes the one that's played on the ice Um, I, th I thought Mike was frozen there for a minute, but his eyes are moving. He's reading something. <laughs> so is it was was ice hockey? Um, was that uh, did that go away? Was some there a problem with yeah. refrigeration in the north, Eric? What what was going on? No, it's no, we see we keep we keep good ice up here, uh, but evidently the world had a pandemic and uh, what? Weren't, weren't allowing us to play such things. So um, how am I just how am I just hearing about this just now? It's true, it's true. Our our avid viewers will know that I'm a hockey player. Um, you know our frequent listeners and such. The fan mail tells me these things. <laughs> so I've I've been off the ice since March, which is the longest time forever. Since uh... But no, no, go back to Tron, please. That's far more relevant right now. I had no idea they were doing that. The ice hockey? No, Tron. <laughs> I mean, I like ice hockey, but Tron, that's, so, that's something else. Here's a question, a another team's question. Uh, somebody asked, um, uh, my team message was deleted and I want uh, undo messages. Is it, you know, how to undo a deleted message? That they said? Cycle bin. Is there, for, is there a recycle bin for your messages? Well, I mean, they're stored. Where are they? They're stored. They so they're stored. In, first question, though, is it, are you talking about the threaded message of the discussion within a chat? Or are you talking about a, 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 a chat? Do you have any indication there? No. Oh, well, then it depends. 
<laughs> ding, ding, ding. We should have a swear jar for it depends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> something. I've got a lot of quarters. I can... Uh... Actually, there's a shortage of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but Eric, money. that's not real money. No, this is from my Monopoly set. I heard there was a um, an actual shortage of change right now in the U.S. Because it's all at my house. Exactly, he's going to the safe. It's, that's where the safe is, people. It's in my car. It yeah, I've got one of those upstairs. It's yeah. Similarly full. It's crazy. I used to think like, God, what, what a rip off those machines, those coin machines at the grocery store. They take like 10% or 15%. And then when you get things like this full or even bigger, you know, like that five gallon water jug, if anybody's done that and filled one of those before, you know, and then you're thinking, there's no way in hell I'm going to roll all these. <laughs> take them to the grocery store and sit there, cough it up. and Just Take it to Coinstar. Hey. Yeah. Coinstar. That's right. That's great. Hey, I was going to show one other uh, so new toy. Um, you guys might appreciate these. If, if So this was uh, a new purchase. So the little, um, this is the, uh, what is it, Teenage Engineering Pocket Operator. So I was looking for a, uh, a just a modern sounding little drum, but inexpensive drum machine uh, so that I can use it for beyond a click track do something a little more uh a uh, little bit fancier for bass and guitar and keyboards my synths and stuff and so this uh so the actually as you see they're you know they're hooked up you can actually run a, a a i don't know i've seen videos with five or six of these things of different sound effects so i've got my rhythm my uh which is just the the drum track and then i've got the sub the the bass little sounds and i've got another a chorus that is ordered um, that allows different tones. And so you can program these things in and sync them up. So, and then with the export, plug it right into my computer. I can sample it. I can, you know, re do the recordings or in with live. It's just, a, it's a, a whole lot of fun. So if anybody Very has nice. experience with these and would like to connect with me and talk about them, you know, my, my little journey of learning how to use these things and program them. Um, it's a whole lot of fun. Where'd you find them? Uh, on the Amazons. Yeah. That was, was looking at a bunch of, uh, some older, I was looking to buy like a, uh, a TR 505. Um, but one of the older, like eighties drum machines for some of those classic sounds and came across these things. The difference being that you're know, buying a drum machine that does something comparable is in the hundreds of dollars. And these things are like 50 bucks a piece. Very neat. So, it's a fun little little gadget to play along so keep me apprised of that i am definitely interested what you're essentially saying is that you have untold gizmos at your disposal and you can't get that to do <laughs> right that's what i'm saying yes how hard can it be <laughs> christian yeah. everybody's on I you man yeah no you know what it is it's the it's the filtering that teams has and it filters out a lot of the, a lot of the background noise, and we've discovered that with music and other things. So, and that uh, happened with uh, well, like Facebook live streams. So they filter out a lot of that, and it has to do with uh, you know improper usage of music rights, uh, licensing rights. And so they provide that AI filter that knocks out most of the sound. It's not that it's crappy background sound. It's not it's not a crappy microphone. It's the AI that's filtering a lot of that out. It's why you guys don't hear it when I hit the buttons. A year ago, you'd hear all that stuff, but it would pick up dogs barking and people walking in the background, background noise. And a lot of that is filtered out now. I hear that. And then I have my little button here. Do what you love. <laughs> Do what you, you love. Create huh? your reality. <laughs> oh, boy. Positive affirmations. Awesome. Where's Stuart's moment? A suck it sandwich. Wait. You are a badass. <laughs> we have gone off the rail. We have officially yeah. gone off the rail. All right. <laughs> Let me check with any any other questions. Wow.
Um, so this is how you can tell when there's no other questions, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and all yeah, that really uh, means is that Liam isn't watching from somewhere. That's, that's right. That's what other, other other people. So um, see, uh, so Sherman, uh, in, uh, Sherman that we all know. There's not some other Sherman out there. I think there's just one Sherman. So hey, Sherman. Thanks for watching. Uh, just tried to that move operation from uh, all from within teams and it worked. So that's the first thing I was going to do. I mean, obviously, I'm running this uh, the recording in teams, so I'm not going to go and, uh, and and mess around and try and experiment. But um, thanks for the data point, Sherm. Yep. So uh, I mean, that would be I've got in my uh, demo environment. I've got you know I can go and try and recreate that and see if I come up with the same result. Because um, something else just kind of to that point is that there are little things which should work and occasionally with, you know, your tenant, something might not work the same way. So it might be a tenant level issue, but should be easy enough to go and move from an open uh, channel to a private channel and see if it, uh, if the files show up. Yeah. Um, all right. So. No other new questions. If there are, if you are watching, we've got another uh, 20 minutes. Uh, if you have a question you'd like us to try and address, then feel free to ask. Hey, Sean, I see that you've joined the chat over in the, the Book of Faces. I've actually had it open the whole time. Oh, well, you just showed up in there. So. Oh, I guess uh, leaving the uh, window focus does something. Yep. Something else, uh, so somebody asked the question, can I pop out a team like you can do with the chat? Um, talking about uh, being able to, to now do the pop out chat. Has everybody gone and used that new feature? Yeah. yeah. No, so, it doesn't work here yet. Yeah, so so here's what I found. So it doesn't work as uh, in the guest tenants. It has to work when you're fully logged in. So one, and then two, I was kind of hoping, I, I I knew it wouldn't work this way, but I was hoping, it was fingers were crossed, that I could then switch tenants and it would still leave it open. Nope. Nope. Mm. So it no was, yeah, yeah, so I was I was almost excited about that feature. Because the I problem now, that. it kind of goes back to what we were discussing earlier of, of using Rambox or um, you know, multiple browser instances of Windows. Um, to to log into multiple uh, Teams environments, I I would still love to have a Hootsuite like interface that where I could track chats or team discussions, channel discussions, in a column, but across multiple tenants all in one view. That's the ideal. That's that's the world we need to live in. Let's build it. Something to aspire to. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, somebody wants to. I don't have the ability to go and go and build it. I, I suggested that and had the product team members say, it's like, that's a really good idea. It's like, yeah, You're the idea guy. I, I, I just want it to exist. So idea if somebody guy. wants to build that. Luckily, I found a good drum piece for you here. If yes. You're ready. Did you want to tell the joke first? Any joke whatsoever, and then we can hit the drums or, or no. Hashtag ice cream. How's that? Does that work? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a Phil Collin esque. Yeah. So you can always play name that tune. Yeah. <laughs> oh my we, gosh. Yes, we could. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh my. Let's see. Any other questions? Um, oh, here's a question about mail merge. Ugh. <laughs> All right, I, we Sean has graciously yeah. volunteered to answer that question. Yeah, step yeah. back. How about this? This is this is one that I know is pertinent to all of us. Uh, does it, with the U.S. and and uh, Canada represented? Uh, Canadian. Does, anyone, <laughs> does, anyone, does anyone know when Excel money is going to include access to UK bank accounts? I want to know, people. Hmm. <laughs> I actually spoke to the queen about that this morning, and it, it seems okay. to be it seems to be tied up in legislation. 
Uh, Boris. Uh, you, had to yeah. teach, you had to talk to Boris. The Queen has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Uh, uh, such a good mood though when I spoke with her. Yeah, Queen's just a figurehead. You're just, you know, you're just talking to the the, the monarchy. Uh, when, when Boris <laughs> is on the money here, I yeah, know we're in trouble. Um. Oh, somebody is asking about. Uh, there's a video. It's a demo uh, with Microsoft with their demo system. And um, Georgie was asking. I want to to add. I want the share to teams button in outlook like in this video but i can't see it in my outlook add-ins is it really is it? and it's because if anybody's looking since i don't believe it's deployed yet so this is one of those examples i believe correct me if i'm wrong if it's starting to be deployed it's out there but it's uh, it's like a summer feature i believe they've said summer but it's not deployed yet sure. um and so Microsoft has talked about it and shared it, and obviously it's in an internal demo environment that Microsoft is using. However, it's not yet generally available. So it's if they go into the options and they go into add-ins, they don't see an add-in that says Microsoft Teams meeting add-in for Microsoft Office? No, it's not that. It's the specific of the share to Microsoft Teams. So this is the ability where you can go uh, and if you receive an email, and that you can share it to Teams specifically. So it's it's the addition of a little button um, that allows you to share it. Here, I'll sh share okay. it. I, I don't have it either, so I, yeah. I thought maybe you can add it, but no. So here's the question for those that are watching the stream and see it. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, the reason you're not yet seeing is because it's not yet available. Um, yeah. I'm waiting yeah. for it as well. I don't have it in my tenant. Yep. I, I don't believe it started rolling out yet. Makes sense. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that it's what what's out there. What was uh, released initially was the share, uh, you know, pushing things out to be shared to Outlook um, so that you can, uh, you know, send a notification it's the idea is to pull people into teams saying hey there's this thread that's going on join this discussion um or or check out this discussion that's happening over in teams so somebody that might not be part of that team but exactly. might want to respond to that with a link back to the team conversation and this is just from the other direction being able to take something that's not yet in teams Push it from Outlook. You should really have that across all Office apps, though, because you should be able to share out anything to Teams, Excel, Word, you know, PowerPoint, you name it. You should be able to just say share to Teams. Well, it took forever. This started with OneNote, right? We've had shared OneNote for years. Yeah. yeah. But realistically, I mean, you'd want to share just about anything you create, you know? Um, so, yeah. They went and even took it further and they had a web clipper for teams, you know, so you could actually be on a website and say share to teams and you can share the, you know. Well, what would be the right, behavior? so if I have a, 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 a say a PowerPoint deck that mm -hmm. I have locally and I want to share that to teams, yep. then what's the right behavior? So for people to be, be able to get access to that. Part of yeah. that process, is not just sharing, saying, hey, take a look, it might be embed, they can view only. Um, it would, could automatically share it to my OneDrive to make it shareable um, out there. So it'd be multiple steps. You're not just sharing something locally. They'd have no way of accessing that. So it'd have to be a sharing it as a link. So if it, it would then have to move it to a location where it's accessible out in Teams or, right. or elsewhere. And, and that kind of makes sense with the way Office is now because Office, you can set up the services, right? So. <clears throat> excuse me, I would already have a service set up for my OneDrive and it would just see that and would just say, okay, I can link directly to your OneDrive, right? Because it's all in Office, you know, the entire Office we can see those services whenever you open Excel or PowerPoint or Word or you access or whatever, when you go to File, Open, it can see those services that you've added. Yeah. So I think that team should be able to do the same thing or will eventually be able to do the same thing. Don't you Stands know to reason. Logical to me. 
Christian doesn't seem sold on the whole idea. Right? No, I mean, if you think about the behavior today, to be able to share out and to collaborate uh, and co-edit and collaborate on something, it has to either be, um, you know, it has to be uploaded into Teams or it has to be in a... Um, the SharePoint site. It's got to be cloud resident. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, so I agree with you. I, just the added complexity is that if it's local, so there right. has to be some some in between stage that alerts you that hey you're sharing something that was private local out to so this place. So I do that today. If I am in Word, then I have that on my C drive, the document, and I want to share that. When I click on that share with someone, it tells me that it's uploading it to OneDrive. So it automatically takes that step, puts it into your OneDrive, and then shares it out. So you just need to add in that step that as Teams as a destination, let you navigate to the right place for that to be shared. Yeah. That or makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes that makes sense. You know, some just yeah. once in a while. Whoa, 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 Mike, that was the, the one time. <laughs> Call it a weekend. So we're gonna, we're yeah, gonna man. start, that was it. Gonna That's start week. tracking this now. Eric, do you still have the score from two weeks back? <laughs> yes. Well, add one point for Mike. All right, we're 181200. I won't say. <laughs> uh, yes. And we lost I need, up. I need more coffee. I think he passed out and he froze at the same time. What have you drank my coffee, guys? Come on. Yeah. Hey, the the other uh, Eric asks: Is anyone played with IoT and single board computer? Looking at Drudo? Or, uh, yeah. Arduino? Well, it depends on who you talk to. Is it Azure or is it Azure? Or, you know, um, it's Azure. Yeah. I, I have, have not. Yeah. 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 Ask Rosinovich that question. And he gets, he gets pissed. He's to the point where he gets pissed off about it. He's like, <laughs> Azure, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I understand that. Yeah, you know, I think where the confusion it comes from is that uh, Azure is the name of the bad guy in uh, f what is it, the flight of the the last Starfighter, the Disney film from the eighties. Really? Wow! Right. How obscure yeah. is that? So I got on my Plex server, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually it's good. I mean, it's 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 like the. It, it it's the you know Tron being the first movie that included the full. Uh, uh, you know, the, the computer graphics. Um, so this is not much better um, than that. In fact, I, I don't think it's as I good. Starfighter, he's playing the video game. He's yeah, playing I mean, lots up in the video game and it sucks him into the video game. I remember that. Yeah. But the thing is, is that what I understood was many years ago when we first started having a debate about how it's pronounced, it came around to the different languages pronounce it differently. So the you know in French the, the people who speak French would say Azure, um, you know, and we would be like, oh, the Americans say Azure, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. So it was more of a, a cultural or a locality type of difference. So you, so French speakers say it incorrectly. I get that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in some. Dim sum. What? <laughs> I told you eat Dim before the show. Good stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting close to lunchtime. Yeah. Oh, if I was only close to Din Tai Fung. <laughs> Hal, where'd you go? Oh, I'm back. I know. I. <laughs> like I said, I've been fighting with teams. Uh, I've had. It's no fun when you don't when when things don't want to authenticate. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I've been fighting authentication. Um, the. The, uh, the, the, the account I'm using, um, the folks at Roland Shore have uh, <clears throat> set up with a, uh, an authenticator called Duo. And uh, I've been having issues with Teams because apparently Teams doesn't like Duo. So I've been for the last few minutes trying to see if I could get a different authentication method working. And it looks like it finally has. But I don't know what else I've screwed up in the process. So it's going to be. Sorry to hear that. 
Hey, Hal, mm-hmm. is that a documented issue? Is is that like a known problems with Duo and Teams? Uh, I'm the only one that I know of that's using it. Uh, with teams. <laughs> I think I've got <laughs> Duo. Yeah, I've got Duo. But have you documented it, Hal? Because if you've documented it, you, you're halfway there. Yeah, well... Um, I've got a client who uses Duo. But I've not had to... Yeah, the with trouble with it is that, that the way this is supposed to work is that, that anywhere I go that needs an authentication, for whether it's Microsoft or whatever, uh, that always gets referred back to Duo, which is the second factor, and that uh, that brings up a you know approved disapproved screen on on my phone. Um, with the exception of uh, the last oh, month or so in dealing with Teams, now if, as long as I'm in I'm the, in the Roland Shore and Tower tenant, I got no problems. Everything works. Uh, when I go over to the Microsoft guest tenant, however, suddenly it won't authenticate. It, uh, for the last couple of weeks, the only way I could get it to authenticate was to have it phone me. Well, today, uh, we went through a little bit of a gyration. It looked like it was going to start to use Duo. But then I was presented with a screen that says verify authentication with exactly one, two things on it. A link that says more information, more information and a button that says cancel. And there isn't much you can do with that. <laughs> Jeez. So I've been I've been dealing with that, and I think I managed to backdoor the Microsoft Authenticator app in, which means I probably screwed up something else, really, <laughs> somewhere else. Hal, have you tried turning it off and on again? Yes, I did try Is that. What okay. did? <laughs> did you check the flux capacitor? <laughs> I think that's, I think that's uh, exactly well, one pellet, one trip. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. You're stuck in this time now, Hal. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you oh, you need you, it takes a lot to create that 1.2 gigawatts of energy to escape this. But uh, yeah, uh, Buckley, don't insult your own intelligence, man. Everyone knows it's 1.21. Yes. All right. <laughs> See. Oh well. There we go. I love teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so much love. Well, it's got. We've got a couple, one more minute, minute and a half. Here's a here's a great uh, question to to wrap up on. Is there a way to turn off autosave for Office online documents? Mm. So online a, in the in the desktop app, you can turn it off, but not while opening documents through the web app. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Let me go with no. Yeah, built into there's uh, plumbing and uh tobias uh, kaprowski so a good friend uh, based out of the uk and uh, mvp and he says simple answer no this is how the system has been created and designed with online apps users don't care about saving that's why there's also no save button correct only yeah. save that's yep yep because nobody wants a floppy disk icon in their toolbox <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I do. <laughs> What's a floppy disk? Uh, coaster. <laughs> Wall art somewhere or someone. In, yeah, indeed. Well, we are at the uh, top of the hour, gentlemen. So uh, thanks so much for participating and uh, and for the, uh, the the nominal advice that uh, <laughs> provided uh, the is the value provided to the community here today. Yeah, so, have we done a service or disservice? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes we have. That's all. The only true statement there is that we're done. <laughs> Everything else is really subjective. Fact. Indeed Fact. we are. All right. <laughs> Take a full so to, uh, Play us out with the, uh, get it to play here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Gentlemen, thanks a lot. We'll see you. Uh, we'll be back on at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, except for Riz. He, <laughs> he's sleep early. He needs his 12 hours. I, 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 just, I just had a call booked with a client for 9 p.m. tonight, so lucky me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a really great day, guys. Talk to you later. See you soon. Good everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, and we are now live. And uh, 
for those that are uh, that are watching us that uh, are joining via Facebook, we're live streaming here. This is our Microsoft Community Office Hours, which we do every Monday at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, or close to midnight, Sean's time, whatever it is over there. I'm not so good with the time zones. <laughs> Just 9 p.m. here. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're monitoring. Wow. Yeah, we actually had, uh, look for this morning, we had uh, so far, we had 308 views of this morning session. Mm. Um, and if you've not caught one of these, uh, I tonight or tomorrow, more likely tomorrow, I got some stuff to finish tonight, but I combine both recordings and I post them over on uh, my blog at buckleyplanet.com where you can go and do a search for office hours or look for the office hours logo, not hard to, to miss. And um, I catalog every topic that we cover in both morning and evening sessions. And so you don't have to watch all two hours. Uh, although Sean, I think you'd agree it's must watch TV. It's you know <laughs> absolutely, yeah. So good. And he's very good at cataloging, I might add. Yeah. It's so good all the time. Yeah, there's there's a lot of little like um like little knife wounds to uh my <laughs> co-hosts uh, where since I've compiled the list, I'm poking fun like Sean's complaining again about this or <laughs> Or yeah. Eric was whining about something. <laughs> we all lose fingertips every now and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah it happens. You, know, you got the rest of the hand. Um, yeah, so uh, so anyway, so if you have questions, go ahead and post them uh, to, we've got two places where it's streaming. We've got the watch group that's going over on the Office 365 community, but go ahead and post your questions there. And we're also going through and uh, uh, reading through questions that have been asked. And anything you come across today, Sean? Anything else? Uh, no, actually, I was just downstairs filing cards before I came up. So, oh, gaming stuff. Yeah, little magic. You, you know, I've never played that. Really? So I've got uh, uh, nieces and nephews that are big time into that, and I think at one point, um, both my older two kids got into that and started collecting cards, but I've never played it. I mean, wow. I, I, I'm a bit more old school. I was back in the late 70s, early 80s, was really into Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. and, you know, collected lead figures and, oh yeah, uh, you know, got really into role play game stuff. And then, of course, got into the electronic version. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that yeah. I call myself a gamer. Do you call yourself a gamer? Do you I'm a gamer. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know what the line is of, uh, for the conversation. there's a line. I mean, for the conversations we have, am I a gamer? <laughs> well, you play games, therefore I do you're play a gamer. Games. Yeah, but but see, the rest of my family, like my wife loves games, uh, board games, other card games, and I abhor the most of them. Mm -hmm. Not a fan. Uh, I'll, I'll do it once in a while, you know, the, the uh, apples to apples type games or whatever <laughs> yeah. else, you know. Um, but of course, I have the the collection of the uh, exploding kittens, you know, mm -hmm. burrito, that kind oh, yeah. of stuff, and then of course the the online games, the two online games that you're aware of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Christian and I are friended on Steam, and so we yeah. see each other pop up every now and then. It's a good way, and, and I don't know if you if you monitor enough. Like sometimes, and because uh, my son will see me on there, is like. What are you doing on at the middle of the day? I said, I was on there for like 10 minutes. I went in and played like half a round of TF2. Mm -hmm. just to, I said, I just need to give my brain a rest after an hour long meeting and, and yeah, do that. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Hop on, play a round of magic. As long as I don't get some bozo who's got a deck that gets into all kinds of mechanical nightmares and gyrations it slows the whole thing down you can get around out pretty quick yeah i do enjoy i think there's one type uh, genre of youtube video that i really enjoy uh you don't see as many of them these days but um occasionally you see with like Fortnite and games like that uh was it the other one apex i think that's the one my son plays as well uh, which is like Fortnite. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but was uh, World of Warcraft where you'd have videos of people going in and wiping out entire clans. Fantastic. I don't have yeah. to play the game to watch. The, there's somebody like in the real world, that would be our world, Sean, like <laughs> just died or something, some yes. young gamer. And so they, they advertised that they were like no weapons and they were doing a giant funeral procession and a bunch of people took advantage of it, went in and killed all of it. Like, yeah, I know. It's, it's fantastic. Ludicrous. Yeah. yeah. We're talking Making... virtual war, World of Warcraft deaths, people, not real life. So, But yeah. there's a movie in the making right there. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to be right back. Uh, it was the the voice of Hal coming from voice the head. Voice of Hal, yes. yeah. <laughs> Wrong tenant. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Wrong tenant. <laughs> hey, so here's – to kick things off while we're waiting for other questions here. Um, so somebody uh, made the comment – I think we may have discussed it briefly this morning about um, – it says, hello, anyone. This is from Hoya. Um, hello, anyone. Microsoft Teams eats – more RAM memory, about 700 to 800 megabytes. So what should I do to reduce usage for Teams? Is there anything that someone can do to reduce performance of Teams? It's not uh, like Chrome where you can go and every tab that you have open in the browser eats up more, like close tabs. Yeah, I'm not aware of anything you can do. Um, I think it's just a function, you know, as you open up perhaps additional document libraries and SharePoint sites and whatnot, and all that stuff comes flying in and cached into memory. Um, it'll chew up memory, but go get some more memory. It's it's cheap. I, I don't have any good tips on, you know, what you can do with Teams to somehow constrain its usage of your resources. Well, my assumption, again, I might be wrong because that's the definition of assumption, making an ass of you and me, but um, is that the browser version of Teams is going to eat up fewer resources than the desktop. I don't know if that's it true hmm. or not. It very definitely is true. Okay. Uh, Hal, are you aware of any way to optimize your Teams usage? Mm -hmm. Anything else you could do? Suck it up, buttercup, basically. If you're going to use the desktop client, you're basically going to get what the desktop client gives you. The, uh, the advantages of the browser version are it uses a lot less resources. Uh, coming from the world where often uh, we have two or three meetings at the same time, um, if I load up one meeting in the desktop client, I can maybe get away with one more meeting on, on, on a browser client but usually my machine gives up and throws up and uh, one of the two crashes and then I start from scratch. If I run if I run just the browser client, I can get away with two, sometimes three meetings concurrently. In so, but, but, Hal, for, but Hal, people that are not on a 28640, <laughs> are they okay? <laughs> it's a Surface Pro 5 with an i7 and the best that they could do for it. The only yeah. thing it's lacking is the biggest hard drive. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just looking at some of the other comments. It's really a slouch. Yeah. Uh, some other things uh, uh, saying like, uh, you know, hey, add more RAM. A few people saying that. Somebody suggested uninstalling it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that will reduce resource That's not a solution. That's... It'll reduce resource usage. <laughs> well, the yeah. The yeah. thing of it is, is it's for in, in the case of in the case at least of the of the surface, it's it's the amount of graphics it runs. Um, it the graphics the GPU doesn't like doesn't like getting very warm, and uh, it does that, and then things just stop. Yeah, I like this. Uh, Andre says I've seen a similar post to this elsewhere. Making fun of the problem will not solve it. How about some constructive suggestions? <laughs> Shame on us. Shame on us. If I had some suggestions, <laughs> I would give them. At the yeah. time being, I'm still investigating that and attempting to come up with some. Yeah, and this is a known I'm thing. I'm enjoying this, frankly. Right. No, I think we're, we're all experiencing that. Um, Alistair Pugin, uh, Mr. Pugin, um, mm -hmm. uh, he says, turn off GPU acceleration. And then uh, Jeff below that says, try running in the browser rather than the application. Yeah, uh, which I, 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 that's, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're, look, there's, 
I, I've not gotten in, gotten into the religious discussion with uh, product mm-hmm. team members on why they use the Electron app, you know, and why they went that direction. Um, I don't know if there's anything you guys can go more in depth of why Microsoft made that architectural decision. I don't know the reasons behind it. Yeah. Is it? I just assume it was like a cross workload integration or, 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 you know, I don't know what the other apps are. That's not my world. So, mm-hmm. um, but that, you know, that's been a complaint since day one when it went live. People saying, why did you build it the way that you did? And uh, again, then it goes off to sidebar discussions into those details that, you know, my brain doesn't hold on to some of that stuff because doesn't brain don't care. <laughs> well, bad. perhaps we can get somebody from the product group to uh, give us uh, a history or a rationale, well, kind of yeah. walk through. That would be interesting. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, ping Lori about uh, Lori Potmar for those that don't know that runs all the community mm-hmm. stuff around Microsoft Teams, or get Caruana, who's over on the in the engineering organization and speaks for a lot of what they're doing, um, to talk to us about teams and performance um that would be an interesting discussion i participate in that mvp call if they did that so see what we can find out and disseminate to to folks oh yeah Uh, i think it it would probably have been if i had uh prepared in advance for some of these questions maybe go look through the roadmap to see if there's anything around performance for teams on the roadmap um but well I'm, i'm sure they're always performance tuning and you know the recent uh, surge in usage and need for teams has certainly driven uh, some of the behavior that tends to optimize the application over time yeah. i'm sure it's you know advancing but um i'm sure they've got folks who are looking at performance there's there's all sorts of things that you can do in terms of performance just thinking you know hypothetically um, when you're talking about a, an AV application, you're, you've got codecs involved, streaming rates, um, you know, how hard are they working, your GPU or your CPU, um, buffering, um, caching, all sorts of things. So it's a complex beast. Yes, it is. And, and the thing, if it is, they, they keep announcing new features. Uh, and um, a lot of them are taking a while to migrate through. Uh, so, for example, what we've got here, for the most part, most of the things I wind up doing, I've got just the four, the uh, four quadrant screen. Uh, occasionally, I get into a meeting, and well, lo and behold, I'm surprised there's nine there for a change. Um, the advertised well, for example, the uh, the the uh, the pop out chat. Um, there are articles. And uh, even a couple of Microsoft docs say, you know, okay, this is how you do it. Go here, click that, pow, out it's supposed to pop. When fortunately, I click here, but I don't have the click there <laughs> uh, part of it. It's just not there. There's supposed to be a little pop out thing that you get to from chat, or if you're in the chat, you can. It's, it's got a little pop out icon. Mileage may vary. That. And, you know, and I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind. You know, waiting if it's a matter of just waiting for the feature set to arrive to to buy a particular client. Um, but it brings the question to me: Is okay? Well, is there something about the uh, the tenant that I'm in? Right, right now I'm in the in, in the the Roland Shore and Tower business tenant, which is where I need to be in order to get things like the chat and emojis and things like that to work. I guess that's where I came in first. The, when I started off, I was in the Microsoft tenant, and half the stuff didn't want to work. Um, so, it, oh, it wanted to work, Hal. It probably did, but there was no way to turn it on or off. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere for the gerbils to run. It's kind of like that thing I had this morning with the authentication, where I had this this nice little window that came up that says verify your you know verify your your, your login and it, it was a little square window and it has you know a more help link and a cancel button <laughs> i finally have got that more or less resolved i don't know if i've got it resolved right like i was explaining but at least it works i'll try to go back and figure that part out later another part of the equation i'd like to uh, for example in this role insuring tower tenant here 
I would like to make use of that to to put on some webinars and some things and some of the other stuff that they aren't really doing with it yet. But I can't invite guests. Well, that's one of the five or six or seven settings that is involved with guest access and teams. But I'm not privy to that part of the admin console. So there's nothing I can really do about that. I suppose I can go over to the one that I get courtesy of the, the E5 licenses. We get as far as being a, a, an MVP, but then I've got to go through all the same steps again. And so it's, it's just complex. I think it's a little bit more complex than it needs to be. And of course, you have to take that with a grain of salt, considering all the features and things that actually will do and all the places it does it. It's yeah. It's a, I guess I, the best I could put it is, is a work in progress. I mean, I, I, it's a love hate thing. I, I, I really like using it from the standpoint of the, the, uh, the, to the meetings that we have, for an example, that we used to do that. We would have the, the get together would be on Skype. We would have, uh, we would have, uh, OneDrive open to look at the meeting notes, minutes, and so forth that we were doing. Uh, we would also have Slack open for sending stuff back and forth because there really wasn't a good way to do the chat and that. So, like, there's three or four different things open. Along comes Teams, pow, everything happens in one screen. It's gorgeous. I am so in love. And I think I we, we talked about that on one of your BuzzFeeds. Yeah. Uh, just, just for clarification, too, for people watching, um, Slack and Teams are not competitors. competitors. According to CEO Stuart Butterfield. Okay. Who who paid for a full page Wall Street Journal and New York Times ad or whatever it was when the teams was released. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was my but sorting yeah. out the complexities, yeah. like I say, a work in progress. Yep. I'm learning about it daily. Lots of moving parts. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, hey, Hal, any, anything come up that you wanted to talk about this evening? Any issues today? Or? I've shot about a third of the, 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 the allotted time. I think probably I should shut up and let somebody else say something. <laughs> you're fine, Hal. <laughs> Oftentimes you're sitting there quietly. We don't hear from you. Uh, okay. Well, it's, uh, it's just been one of those circumstances. And like I say, if I hadn't had to fight with it this morning and miss at least one meeting because it was only a short meeting and it took me a little while to figure out the authentication. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, most of those, most of those get recorded and stuffed somewhere. And I think probably it being one of Lori's meetings, I, I, I could, I could certainly find out where and go and go view it. Yeah. Yeah. Having recordings of uh, various proceedings is very helpful these days. You know, you can't be everywhere at once. Yeah. What are your? Uh, oh no, go ahead, Hal. I was going to say, I mean, I, I, that that recording feature is just really awesome because a lot of the times, once I say it, well, like I say in the business meetings, um, there's a couple of uh, different other tools. One of them is called IT Glue. It's a uh, it's a back end for uh, um, managed service providers. It's uh, it fixes uh, procedures. Um, all sorts of things that we've collected over time, and it's all uh, it, it, it's all IT. put in one place. Is um, it like wiki? What it, what is it? I mean, sounds like know, something right? teenagers huff. No, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's called chuffing. chuffing. <laughs> I'll take your word on that one. I've never said <laughs> it. I glue. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. No. Is it, well, so I was actually going to ask while I was, you know, rudely trying to interrupt you was uh, what your uh, uh, your policy was, personal policies on recording teams meetings. Like, uh, so it's with some clients and I, it's their tenant, but any meeting that we have, we hit the record button and it was not every one of them, um, but the, uh, not every one of the clients do this, but, it, it, you know, I convinced one of them who was dead set against it until I explained, I'm like, look, uh, it's your environment. Um, my suggestion is where yours, it's like, oh, I forgot to take that down on my notes from last time. I'm like, capture it. It's part of your repository and it's instantly transcribed. And then, well, instantly, instantly, and then made searchable within teams. Why would you not 
record all of those meetings. Yeah. As well, think, that's that's kind of what exactly we do it for. Not not for the general, regular, normal course of the big meeting because we're all looking at uh, at a one note uh, one note sheet of that. But occasionally, like I say, someone will develop something in 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 one or two or three of the other programs we we have, and then it's a show and tell. It's okay. We've added this new feature. Here's how you use that. And it starts to screen share. And anytime one of those comes up, I record it. I don't remember that stuff all that well, but I got those videos I can go back and look at. I can go back and look at them a dozen times if it isn't making sense. Or if I have questions that I want to ask uh, whoever set it up. It's it's a ridiculously cool feature. Yeah, yeah record the collaboration. Don't worry about it. Let the yeah. technology work for you for a change. Exactly. I just want to... <laughs> I just want to say say again, so anybody watching the live stream, we've got a few people that are out there. If you've got a question you would like us to try and tackle, then go ahead and type it in, and uh, and, and we'll do our best to... Uh, and to watch us answer. flounder. That's right. <laughs> um, I do have a, a couple of questions kind of queued up to discuss. Um, so the first one, uh, so Liam, not the Liam we know, uh, another Fair. Liam asks, uh, this is out in the Microsoft Teams community, um, on Facebook says, I've created a team and we wanted to enroll all users in the tenant into this team automatically. So I have used the dynamic user membership type group. I have created the membership rule and it is pulled through all users that meet the criteria. Um, 4136, so 4136 uh, exported to Excel nice. for confirmation. I've checked a test account and I created and it shows as meeting the requirements and the validation and it shows the group membership as applied in their uh, account properties in Azure AD. When I go to the relevant team, I can see that it has only 3,823 members of the users from the dynamic group, even though it should have done them all. I'm aware of the 5,000 member limit in teams that we have not exceeded this. What could cause the difference between the dynamic user members and the team's members, and how can I ensure all of them have access to the team? So again, he set it up, the way that he set it up, what he used the dynamic user membership type group. That sounds like something's wrong. So um, the one question that was asked, um, uh, do, 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 uh, see, Karsten asked is, why didn't you just create an org-wide team? I don't know that it would be, um, well, I guess the difference then would be Liam res responding, saying that they have to join the team and it isn't forced upon them this other way. It's inviting them all in dynamically based on their permissions and their profile. Yeah, dynamic groups are really nice when you can bring them into the mix. But um, yeah, the fact that it's not reflecting the actual number of users, that doesn't sound right to me. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, so there's, uh, I mean, my first thought is, well, there must be, for that kind of difference, there must be um, some other uh, rule that's conflicting there that's not pulling them in. And so it would be to go to root uh, analysis would be to go and identify some people that should be in there that you can go and confirm, look at their profiles and see if there's anything that would yeah. uh, exclude them from that. So you've got to rule that out. So you go, and, I mean, I you, you have this to simplify it um, in like the outlook rules that you go and create. I have this all the time where I identify a new uh, type of message from a person or around a topic or a company, and I create a folder for that, and I want to organize my Outlook, my email, and yet they keep going into the wrong folder because there's conflicting rules. And so I've got to go back through and try and identify what are the common denominators between these that, and then I can modify the new rule uh, to, to override that initial rule. Um, I've not done that yet. It's just super annoying, but I just drag and drop the handful that that happens, you know, right now. I, yeah. I've got other stuff to do, but imagine that uh, when you're talking about, you know, um, you know, hundreds of users. Yeah, uh, I mean, still, you're talking about 300 users. It's not a small number. It's not a small number to go and manually correct. So go and find somebody that, you know, 
examine their profile, see if there's some conflict that would preclude them from being added. That'd be the place to start. Yeah. Um, what makes them special? So another comment, Casper says, this is uh, this is good point. Um, teams only as users who have logged on to Teams are not blocked from login or disabled. Mm. So just because they have an, an Azure AD profile does not mean that they have uh, Teams access if they've been blocked or disabled uh, or if they've never logged in. Um, so that would be another kind of cleanup to, to go and review. True. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming when he says that uh, those that meet the criteria, the 4136 number, are those that are vetted that are living human beings currently working for the company who have access to teams. I'm thinking, yeah. But 300 is not out of a, you know, a 4100 is not a, uh, would not be a surprise that those 300 people have never logged into teams. Yeah, it's certainly reasonable. Yeah. Conceivable. It's conceivable. Hmm. All right, uh, the other question, I'll see if there's any, so no other questions posted just yet. Again, don't be don't be shy, people, come on. You know, if you're watching the live stream, go ahead and ask some questions. Um, here's kind of a broader uh, question. I think it's good that we uh, bring this up every once in a while. Um, Patrick asks, uh, where's the best place to learn more about Excel, Word, Publisher, OneNote, says, I've gone through all the trainings offered on the education site. Um, so recommendations. So this is a like another version of kind of where do you keep up with, to date with all the technology and where, where are some suggestions to go? Yeah. How you want to take her? Well, I go to MrExcel.com. Bill Jellin. Mm. One of the smartest Excel people I know. Uh, yeah, there's, um, I, I think if you're looking for in-depth, because part, a good part of training too is uh, uh, is finding out who the experts are and having a connection there. And the MVPs would be a great place to go and start. So this, I would suggest go look up at mvp.microsoft.com and do a search on the products. Uh, take a look at some of the MVPs that pop up there that have that in their profile. It's a little bit of digging, but find like the blogs, the uh, people that are providing a lot of that, because a lot of the MVPs are providing video and blog content and other training materials. Like Most of that for free. Buckle, no. Mm. Yeah. No, don't don't come to me. <laughs> I, I have people that read my. Uh, I've got some. I would say that I've got some decent OneNote content on my blog. It's still blog post that I wrote about OneNote three, four, five years ago. Still gets heavily trafficked. Yeah. Um, I've got a OneNote article that I wrote like four years ago that's still in my top five articles month after month after month. So thousands of people read it for some reason. Yeah, I've got a few of those as well. Yeah. Um, I'll go to docs.microsoft.com. Oftentimes, just you know, yeah. when I've got a cut to the the bone and just get some basics on low level stuff um having that information from the oftentimes the product team uh other mvps there are lots of folks who write for microsoft docs mm -hmm. um we've got you know it's it's off the many of them are uh github repository managed so yep. people are contributing people like us no, Mark Anderson typically, um, I know with SharePoint, um, he's been directing a lot of the Microsoft docs around uh, SharePoint. Um, he's been pulling in people. He's had Sue Hanley and a whole host of other people write for it. Um, and they've done a great job, Julie Turner. But um, yeah, find some people you like and, you know, if there's an area that you are particularly interested in and somebody does something you know i've i do a lot of work with performance and so people who uh, are interested in sharepoint performance typically you know i've had people come up to me at conferences and say you know you're the only one doing anything on blogging about performance or 
putting these things out there and I'll, uh, you know, it's, you need to, it's, you need to write something for those four readers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But find somebody who, um, you know, speaks to, uh, what you really like and, uh, what you want to know and, um, see what they do, learn a little bit about them. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a variation on the look at the MVP theme um, because most folks, I, I can tell you that many of the folks I associate with in the, uh, you know, the broader technological ecosphere uh, have their own personal endeavors and interests and, you know, they do their own things and we all over time get to know each other and what you know, Christian likes to do one thing, you know, Liam Cleary, of course, if we're talking about Wi-Fi and hacking and things like that, Liam's the first one who comes to mind, you know, those, um, those associations get made by learning about people. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I say that, that, uh, if, if you, you won't go wrong starting at the MVP portal and searching for experts there because we're, you know, the vast majority of us are, it's just how we're wired uh, to share that information if you're looking for something specific. Now, there's, I mean, other resources out there, of course, you have the LinkedIn learning tools, and there's a lot of free content that's out there. Um, plural site. Plural site. Is, yeah. is, is, is there free stuff through plural site as well? Is I it, believe they do some. Yeah. They've got trials, at least uh, trials where you can get some stuff for free for a while. But, well, um, what's that other huge? Uh, I was I was looking for it here. That other big um, training or online uh, educational service. There's just a ton of stuff that's free. Um, for writing stuff, there's Code.org. Well, yeah, on the more technical, they were asking specifically oh. about like end user stuff too. But there was mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft partnered with somebody. It wasn't Microsoft. Um, like it wasn't Udemy, it wasn't, I'm just, I'm looking through to, I'm just still not seeing it. Um, a couple months ago, it was announced that there's a bunch of kind of 100 and 200 level content around Microsoft products that was going to be offered for free through this other training site hmm. and um uh, what's the name of the what are the big um well there's uh well there it is it's through well there's some through linda l-y-n-d-a so lynda.com um that's not the one that, there's another one though um edx hmm Hang on, I'm gonna provide the links here. So yeah, so here's the edX link. Um, let me post it in multiple places here. So here, this is the one I was thinking of, is edX was the one where Microsoft made an announcement. So this page, free online courses from Microsoft. And so this is the one that was announced. So Excel, Java, C++, um, Azure, uh, machine learning, Python, uh, it has all of the the various uh, the products, the Office products that are in there as well, Power BI stuff. Um, so that is a fantastic resource. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, the other one, Linda. So they have their Office training and tutorials. Um, it is paid, but you get a you know first month free. Um, so I will add those links in where. Others can see them. Good deal. Yep. So those are those are other resources I would definitely go and check out. Lots of different ways to learn these days. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. No other questions have come in yet. Um, let me see what else. Uh, do. do had an interesting conversation today. Person I referred you to, Sean, 
about uh, her background and kind of the beginning days early on with the uh, with Skype. And uh, so another former Microsoft E and working yeah. for Unified Communications. And we we walked through some of the history of Link and Communicator and Skype and kind of where things have, have come. And so for somebody that was involved with Skype uh, at the beginning of the acquisition back when a Skype consumer uh, and to hear her stories and she's uh, pretty impressed with what they've improved on the UC side through Teams, much better experience. So to have somebody that owned part of the user experience for Skype talk about how uh, improved the Teams experience is over a lot of what they built with uh, with Skype was uh, was good That's to cool. hear as well. Get her perspective. Yeah, got some history there. Yeah. Lineage. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, here's a, here's an interesting question. Um, so Adriana asks, uh, is it possible to delete all the historic messages from a chat in Teams uh, for me and the other user? So the the way that chat is stored, a chat between three of us here, let's say this were the chat feature versus the threaded discussion that's part of a channel. There's a portion of that discussion that we're involved in uh, that is stored personally for the three of us. So I can go in, leave the system, I can wipe out my history, but both of you would have the history of our discussion that you both participated in with me there. I would no longer be showing as an active user if I were deleted from the system, but there would still be a record. Um, the Through the compliance, um, you'd be able to go in and I still don't know if with the compliance, I've not gone in and played with this and it's been a while since I've thought about this, whether you can go in through the compliance center, security compliance, and delete that chat history, which would essentially then be reaching into each of our in individual um, yeah. Christian's frozen. Oops. <laughs> I know all about that. <laughs> Doink. <laughs> Where'd you go, Christian? Oh. They say it happens to me pretty regularly, but that, oh, oh, he's back! Yeah, that's the first time I've experienced that. That was that was weird. Yeah, you just like went all uh, wax statue on us. Well, I think the recording will show that I was continuing to talk, and it was you that was frozen. No, it was. Uh, yeah, I I've not <laughs> lost that connection. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, yeah. Anyway, where was I? What was the last you heard? Talking about uh, reaching in and uh, yeah. deleting portions of the conversations. So, conversation, yeah. yeah, I don't believe the security compliance. I don't believe that you can, as an admin, go in and delete the chat conversation within that's being stored on my system. Um, I don't believe it works like that. An admin has control has the ability to control the discussion that's happening, the threaded discussion. But when you're talking about chat, which is a different communication technology, it's a personal, it's more like a peer-to-peer. -peer. And so therefore, each of the peers part that participate in the discussion have a copy of the dialogue while they were active within it. Makes sense. So, um, yeah, so like looking, uh, so a couple comments there. Somebody saying, yeah, they could be, uh, I'm going to have to respond to this one. Um, somebody said you, you need to put a retention policy in place if you want to delete your private chat or channel conversations. Correct. Otherwise, they're just stored there. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, the answer is I, uh, I'm going to go and verify. Um, whether or not an admin has any ability, uh, almost like your mobile device management, to reach into the device and take action. I don't believe that's the case with chat, but I'll verify that. 
do, do, do. I looked in, into that issue a while back. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Let's see. Um, oh, here, here's a question that I can't answer. Um, somebody, uh, Ann says, could you help how we can find a user in Office 365 using immutable ID via PowerShell? Finding a user in Office 365 using immutable ID via PowerShell. Um, for what purpose? <laughs> so Peter asks, why do you need to find a u which user is using a specific immutable ID? I'm curious. Are you getting some sort of a clash? Um, yeah, there's there's no uh, uh, this is no there's no other details to why. Hmm. I've been writing some PowerShell recently uh, to help uh, some folks I'm working with with regard to uh, alerts on lists and users and uh, pulling back user objects and how they're used throughout the system gets kind of uh, interesting. And looking at this, so there's somebody provided a link to an Okta article on how to get a list of Office 365 immutable IDs from Azure. Mm. Uh, here, I'll grab that. There's that article. What could be some reasons for wanting to do it that way, Sean? Hmm. I'm not too sure. I know immutable IDs have uh, implications during migrations, but uh, beyond that, I'm not too sure. Hmm. Hang on, guys. I'm going to uh, leave this running. I'm going to restart the stream. It looked like it ended. I'm going to go live again there, refresh that, and this refresh on my page. So yeah, we're, sure. still, we're still running here. So Still hobbling along? Still hobbling along. I'm going to open up another browser, and I'll have to mute this one as well. There we go. All right. Got our technical walkers with us. Yes. All right, we're good. Yeah, I have to say something else. Sean, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Dan Usher pulled a, a Cashman, did a oh, pun. Yeah. It's spreading. It's like a virus. It's the virus that we don't speak of often. Is the <laughs> the bad puns? Um, Dan is the king of those. Dan is. I thought Cashman was of bad puns. Well, I talked with I talk with Dan more than I talk with Cashman. Yeah. Well, Cashman posts them, whether you want them or not. <laughs> um, yeah, Dan's pun was. Uh, since hockey has been canceled, no one has seen the Zamboni <clears throat> driver, but I'm sure he will research <clears throat> eventually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brum, brum. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Serve those uh, eggs, Benedict, on a hubcap because there's no place like Chrome for the Hollandaise. I don't know what to say to that. You know, like, I don't want to say well done because then it encourages me. <laughs> well, it's not mine. It's not mine. I, I, it's just one that I saw that I remember. Uh, oh, but it's man. pretty fair. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and 
let's see. Do, do, do. Well, we've got 13 more minutes. So if anybody has questions they like us to try and tackle, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, I saw this question and we didn't get to it this morning. Um, the, the mail merge, and I think everybody groaned mail merge. Yeah. But whether anyone has tried to do a mail merge using a Word document open from Teams. So the Teams or browser version, the mail mm -hmm. merge options are inactive in Word when she has tried. I've never tried that. It doesn't surprise me, but. Yeah, Corey had some good advice. She <laughs> says, I would use the open and desktop option for more complex actions. Uh, it will automatically save your changes in Teams as well. Yeah, yeah. a lot of that, uh, those Word options are going to go Deep, uh, deeper into the uh, product so ah there's there's, a, there's a little more detail here too oh so um bell says uh thanks i opened the document in the desktop and the mail merge options are inactive i had to copy the contents of the word doc opened from teams and paste it in a new document uh, so the mail merge options were then available so there's something that carries over that doesn't allow it when you open and the desktop, it doesn't just work, or it's still holding on to whatever those constraints are for the browser version of Word. But once a new Word doc is opened and that content is pasted in, then those options are available. And Dan responds and says, it's because the, sh the shadow database files cannot connect to a cloud stored file. It would need to be a local file. Yeah, I would also wonder if there were uh, security uh, implications in there. Um, when you're coming out, you know, Office is aware of when you're fetching things from the internet uh, and across security boundaries. Um, so there might be some safety sort of things that uh, get enabled, disabled as needed. Yeah, just to keep things clean and keep users safe. Well, Darren uh, Hemingway had a great response here, which is great. He says, uh, sync the folder involved to your desktop, then you're using a local copy. Yeah, that's so probably the need, best bet. Wouldn't need to go through that additional step if you sync with your desktop, then it is, it's local, <clears throat> both places. And it will still save that cloud version, and yet it should open up the feature. Yeah, because anytime you pull down a, a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that from the internet, you're oftentimes if it's crossing uh, zones, you're going to end up with um, various attributes uh, flagged on the file. You can go in and um, turn. What am I thinking about? There's a checkbox you can uncheck. Um, for a file that allows you to uh, do more with it on your system, potentially unsafe files. Does that include, does it specifically call out, like is there a toggle for the mail merge capability? Um, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, there's a, there's a comment on here. Somebody said, yeah, you need to enable this feature. I, I don't believe that there's a feature for this, you know, to turn on or off for the mail merge. Um, and then he says, if, if you have a custom requirement, you need to use third party app. So that's not real advice. Um, that's a punt. Um, yeah, I think that it's, you know, the, the features there, it's in Word. I mean, you've got to, if for some reason, the syncing with your desktop doesn't then unlock that feature the copy paste into a new word should I, I you know i haven't tested this out i don't have a data source to go and it, make this attempt but i believe what uh, darren pointed darren out suggests, that sync, yeah. it's darren it solves the problem it becomes a local file right absolutely darren usually knows what he's talking about <laughs> 
So, um, no, no, I already answered that important question everyone's asking about Excel money in the UK. So, don't need to discuss that. <laughs> don't need to walk uh, that path again. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. What's going on? All right. Um, yeah, G. Willie wants to uh, jump in. So now? hang on. Yeah, I don't know. At the end, he might have something to say. He might have value to add here to this discussion of Excel money in the UK. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> You're right. I don't know. Uh, hey, hang on. I'm going to forward this over to him. Do you know Jeff Willinger, Hal? Um, not sure. <laughs> Names and me don't get along real well unless I've <laughs> they've been through the, the, the concrete between my ears a two or three dozen times so that they stick. <laughs> I understand. Uh, if I saw his face, I could probably tell you better. Faces, I'm fairly good at remembering. Yeah. Gotcha. He's Just, got a pretty memorable face. He He's a character. Yes, he is. Yeah. He is I, a character. I was just going through and, and looking at some interviews. <laughs> I was going through over on my Buckley Planet profile on YouTube. I've been, you know, working, just putting everything in collab talk for the last couple of years. I forgot about some of the gems that are over in the Buckley Planet. And <laughs> thankfully, all the Exceller stuff is still out there. So all the one thing videos. Mm. Um, wow. So, yeah, there were, you know, a couple hundred of those. Just crazy that there are that many. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's fun to push those out every once in a while. Yeah, it's good stuff. You get people that, that inevitably respond back, why are you guys talking about SharePoint 2010? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. check, check the dates on videos, folks, before you respond. <laughs> All kinds of interesting stuff made in that time frame. Anything else exciting going on this week? Uh, well, it's monsoon season here. I suppose I will see a good deal of that. Yeah. Monsoon season in Arizona. Yeah, Wonder it that. starts uh, right about the uh, oh, the beginning of the second week in July, and will run through about the first or second week of September. We get a uh, big wet airflow off of the uh, Gulf of California. That's mm. right. Yeah. You know, there was a SharePoint Saturday in Phoenix one year, a few years back. And in the middle of it, and we were moving, like we had had lunch in a different building. And we were at like Arizona State, like on the campus or something. And walking across, those were like golf ball size raindrops it was like we were drenched not wow. just like oh i'm a little damp damp like no we were like wringing our shirts out soaking wet man and it and, it, and the streets were just flowing rivers it was uh it's fantastic yeah it was they hot. are extremely intense when they happen the real tragedy with these things mostly is is the air beneath them is generally pretty dry so what you'll have is one of these clouds show up dump a whole bunch of rain uh it all mostly evaporates <clears throat> verga and if it's more intense than that what happens next you get all this air that was dry that is now suddenly wet and has cooled off immensely and it falls like many, 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 many tons of bricks. So we've, we got, mm. we get, we don't get tornadoes. We get wind, wind shear. There'll be mm. a downdraft that just, it looks like, it looks like a bomb went off because you, you look at like the telephone poles and they're in a circle <laughs> around where this thing came down. They just, they, they, they spread out in a, in a, in a circular fashion and you get a real heavy one. So it's, uh, it's always fun. It, it, we don't get tornadoes though. Like I say, they, the cloud bottoms are, are <clears throat> high enough up in the air out here that they just they will start but they don't really get to the ground i think there's been one or two gosh that actually made it to the ground and then in, in, in arizona history 
since they've been keeping that sort of because the tornadoes are smart they're just like it's too dang hot down there forget that <laughs> yeah I, I heard that we were at oh. 114 yesterday black ossie here in the midwest and this is tucson not phoenix there they were probably three four degrees hotter it wouldn't surprise me it was up 118 119 yesterday yeah i, I saw i didn't see what the number was but death valley just reported a record uh hot day i think yesterday oh my gosh I don't know what that is. I'm afraid to look. Yeah. I, ugh, I'm and what's just interesting when that happens. Sean, so like, Sean, it's a dry heat. So it's when it's 136 <laughs> Fahrenheit, it only feels like it's 124. It's not that bad. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. That's a where you it, it that's where you, you don't want to break down because to get out, you you uh you can hear the sizzling of your your flat tire, but the other tires melting on the road, you know, while you're trying to change that tire, get back in. Yeah. And I'm thinking of my cave fish like complexion. Um, <laughs> my father always said that, you know, sticking an Irishman in the sun is like putting a fork in the microwave. Cave fish. I'd, I, now I'm just, I'd, I'd, my, what came to mind was the <laughs> land of the lost, the slea stacks. You know, oh, that, that just, <laughs> but, uh, but thankfully, I didn't say that out loud because that would have been too extreme. <laughs> oh, wow. Land. That was the inner voice. Oh, boy. It's a great That's show. Just, that, that goes back. Yeah, that makes me Chaka. <laughs> Hal, you're Sally. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the only character's name that I remember. I think this... <laughs> I think the girl was Sally. Uh, mm. Well, uh, Jay Willie was a no-show. Wow. Wow. He Just wanted to in, and he didn't show up. That's right. So, yeah, maybe he'll, uh, like that one time, Sean, that you showed up with, like, 20 seconds to go. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa. What did I miss? Uh well, uh, thank you, gentlemen. So I'll, uh, as I said, I, I, I've got some other stuff to do tonight, so I probably won't get the video posted. Uh, well, I might get the video live tonight, but I just won't be able to do the, uh, to sit and go through and uh, and do the links for the blog post. I'll get, but I'll definitely have that live tomorrow. But again, if you'd like to uh, do a recap of the topics that we covered, you can go to buckleyplanet.com and search on office hours. You should see it. Uh, episode 17. So this is the second half of episode 17. And uh, you'll be able to get to uh, all the topics, the two or three relevant things we talked about today, tonight. Um, be able to kind of you know jump through, jump to those links. And then, of course, if you have any questions, it has all of our Twitter handles uh, that are part of that. So please, if you've got questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if there's anything... Um, you know, you can you can continue posting to the recording if you're watching on one of the live streams, and uh, we'll be checking that, and we will we'll try to address them and answer them for you uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and then, you know, we've not really done this, but anything that we've answered during the week, we should definitely talk about next week. Yeah. 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 But otherwise, this we'll be back. Webcast is is yeah. legal to vote next week. This webcast. Is yes. it? Oh, that's right. Hey. We're an entity. It's, it's, it's like weeks or dog years or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we'll be back live at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific uh, next Monday, and uh, we'll be doing it all again. So feel free to uh, ask your questions, and we'll do our best to uh, answer them. So thanks Same a lot, everybody. Same bad yep. channel. Gentlemen, see you later. Take it easy. Bye. Take care. <laughs>